Now maybe the FBI comes to my door and they throw me on the ground, they put their, f- their foot on my face. But I don't have any fear of these people. I don't consent to it. None of us consent to it. Sometimes the best you can hope for is to be the cautionary example for others. In this video, I'm going to talk about Lost Boys. And if you don't know, Lost Boys was a term coined by an online personality known as a limitable man and refers to guys with the lack of male role models, young men, from dad being kicked out of the home, men being removed from the school system, all the way up to adulthood. Now. Some men can go their entire childhood without a single man to mentor them, and the results are a listless group of guys who don't know where they fit in the world. Their results are often a lampooning of adulthood, and they have some real world damage and consequences. This is one of their stories. Patrick Stedman, self-described dating coach, I mean, relationship strategist has been making his living the last few years of showing guys how they can get a wife by following his dating tips. First off, this is already a bad idea, as it's selling guys in the idea that your Disney princess is out there and if you only do a couple fancy parlor tricks and tips, you can win her over and she can gift you with the idea of true love forever. Now, I could make an argument against that, but that's not what this video is about. Besides, if you're a guy with any experience dating, You already know that advice is complete crap. And sure, there's Jordan Peterson's out there who talked about how this was all possible in the early 80s when they met their girl in high school. And even those examples are so rare, so rare that they're the exception that proves the rule. So the problem is the guys who need the kind of help that happens, you know, modern society where we aren't finding our high school girlfriends getting married at 16 and working on the farm at 18 is that guys have no idea what a good idea is, as no one helped them learn. Dad doesn't show up, he wasn't around back when he was an awkward teen. Now, of course this guy sounds like he has everything these poor bastards would want. He lives in a nice home, he has a wife and a baby on the way. If he knows how to get there, why not listen, right? This advice isn't rocket science, a little experience, and anybody can do it. Then he decided to storm the Capitol building. His cheerleading brands online said he was having the millennial version of the Boston Tea Party. Normal men said he was just committing a felony and the FBI agreed with the normies. They can't make me consent to it. I'm free. We are free. We are free. And they don't have any power over us. They don't have any power over us. And this is where everything gets interesting. I'll quote the article on him here. Stedman, who lives with his wife and their month-old child in his parents' house in South Jersey, has developed a moderately sizable following by casting himself as a pickup artist and trafficking in a steady mix of misogyny, COVID denialism, QAnon conspiracies online. Now, I get the journalist was mocking him, with lines like moderately sizable following or casting himself as a pickup artist, but he makes a great point. He brands himself as helping guys get laid, get happy, build a family, and marry that special little woman. And he caught a case of the feelings for the orange man. I can tell you that if it is that way, you have to conclude that Trump betrayed us. In your heart, do you believe that Trump betrayed you? Some people are saying that. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. And it turned into a full-blown conspiracy peddler. Now, why? I have a feeling it's because Alex Jones is hot right now and brand's got a brand, am I right? Now, I don't know what deep state cabal and satanic rituals have to do with dating and relationships. That's anybody's guess. But here's the sad part. He let TV rot his brain. A lot of guys let TV rot their brain. They imagine wanting to be part of history. Not to fix a process, not to protest something, not to be heard, not to do anything of consequence that has an outcome that could be beneficial, but just to be a part of history. 
on film too, because otherwise, you know, if you didn't film it, it didn't happen, right? I mean, this is what 16 year old girls on TikTok aspire to do with their lives, not full grown men with families. Oh yeah. Another thing on that article too, he's got a wife, Polish girl who I understand he picked up when he was doing pickup in Eastern Europe. Moving to the former Soviet states to pick up women was all the rage back when Rush V was still sane. They recently had a baby. He lived with his parents and he planned to move to another country with her and start their life together. I mean, the order that he's doing this stuff is all messed up, but whatever. As long as you get there, you get there, right? And after all this, because he thought of a politician as the God Emperor and decided to break a bunch of laws to support him in, you know, defense against the cabal of QAnon pedophile rings of Illuminati lizard people. Because of all that, now he has to surrender his passport to authorities. He's out on $50,000 bail, recently lost $100,000 gambling on politics or lied about doing that, as well as throwing out 10 grand at a time, making bets on Twitter like he's some child in an argument. No, you can't hit me. I got the special shield. Oh, well, my sword is better. I mean, what the hell are we doing here? We got to start to focus on the more important stuff now. We got to shift gears here. I don't want to do these pissing contests and, well, you know, people keep throwing out this bet. I mean, you guys all know this stuff already. I mean, Colty, Colty never accepted it. Colty's just like a piece of shit. I mean, basically, that's what it is. He's a piece of shit. And if people want to question my honor and integrity, that's okay. Uh, most of the people who do this stuff don't have any integrity. I, I'm not deleting my account because of that guy, Seth. I broke those contracts about a week and a half ago. And whatever, people are going to get pissed off at me. I don't care if they're going to get pissed off at me. And this is going to be the part where I talk about putting a bucket on your head. A metaphor inspired by a good man from the red pill space who goes by the online handle Whisper. You have a guy sitting here telling you to put his bucket on your head right now. And inside that bucket is a wonderful life with a white picket fence and a good home and fancy wines. That bucket has an enlightenment and a wholeness to you that you've been searching for your whole life. Patrick stuck his own head in there, so you should too. And that's the thing. You have no idea what's in that bucket. You don't know what's inside. He'll tell you what he says is inside, but everybody has their own bucket and all their buckets are amazing too. So how do you know? I don't know if you know this, but people lie. People lie, and you're not going to know until you stick your own head into that bucket. And only then are you going to know if the bucket is as good as he says or if you've been conned. So as a strategy here with these unknowns, look at the person. Good luck, right? That's what I got to say. Good luck, because they can deceive you on so many levels. While it may be poor form to judge a book by its cover, it's a great idea to judge a bucket by the dude wearing it. So what kind of life is under that bucket? What do we got here? Fly abroad to a third world country and take advantage of your Western prosperity? Sure, a win is a win. Girl's a girl. Live with your parents after you've been married and have a kid on the way? I mean, seems a bit early to me to be doing all that stuff. Wouldn't you want to at least be financially independent first? But, you know, that's a choice for you to make. Gambling? $100,000 over the results of an election that you've been telling everybody was going to be rigged? Well. I'll tell you right now, personally, my parents' separation was over gambling, so I'm really not a fan of this one, but you do you. And then on top of the loss, continuing to gamble $10,000 more because of some Twitter beef? I mean, this is starting to venture into childhood playground nonsense. All right, next, commit a misdemeanor, possibly a felony. I mean, since when was world star hip hop a dating coach? Film the entire process, including a video confession after the fact. I mean. Committing crimes is bad enough, but strategically, isn't this why bank robbers wear masks so they're not identifiable? And then to do all this stuff with a three-month-old baby at home? Correction, one-month-old baby at home? I don't know much about traditional conservative values, but I'm pretty sure that being there for your brand new infant is right up there with church and eating your weeds. And for all the stuff that's inside that bucket, what was the reason? What was the thing that was more important than keeping a good nest egg, having a good family, not getting arrested. Orange man, of course. Orange man and trying to LARP the Boston Tea Party 2.0. Like, dude, those guys didn't want to be recognized. They knew they were declaring war. They weren't concerned with being a part of history. They just wanted to kick out the Brits and live free. 
and they knew the risks. This capital charging nonsense reminds me of kids who watch wrestling and then go out in the backyard and start giving each other suplexes onto the grass, drop kicking each other, breaking a couple bones. But what was the end result of all this? Well, nothing positive, nothing changed. The only thing that happened was they became a laughing stock. And who was it all for, like I said, the orange man. But I'm sure the orange man was very grateful. Trump probably even pardoned everybody at the event so as to show gratitude for their support. You have to conclude that Trump betrayed us. Oh. That's kind of the scary part here. Like you're watching a lot of brands calling themselves masculine life coaches, fitness coaches, relationship coaches, dieting coaches, ping pong coaches, and levitation coaches lining up behind this guy to cheer him on for his bravery and his balls. Now I know some things are important enough that one can make the case that breaking the law is the thing to do, but that's the point. Something has to result from it. Something has to be fixed. A man feeding his family by stealing food is committing a crime, but most people can sympathize with that. You understand it. You do what you have to do. Like, we get that. But what was done here? Nothing. Some selfies and a free podium. Why do you see a bunch of grown adults cheering him on? Like, this is beyond me. Hell, most of these guys hate feminism. And one of the common complaints I see is about how feminists cheer on their girlfriends to do horrible things, chanting, you go girl, you know. Yeah, Susan, cut your hair short. And any man that doesn't like that's a misogynist. Yeah, don't even worry about a boyfriend until you're 45 and a tenured professor, Susan. Accusing them of sabotaging other girls because misery likes company. And I don't find it very tasteful to see guys say this out of one side of their mouth, then on the other side, cheer on a man who's destroyed his family before it even got started. Now you don't have to take my word for it. Let's hear what a relationship strategist would say on committing crimes. And here's the lesson for the average guy listening to this. Be very, very careful who you listen to. I get it's hard out there. A lot of dads were kicked out of the house. Men aren't teachers anymore. A lot of guys go through their entire childhoods without a single example of a good man to learn from. And there's lots of value in guys online who have bridged this gap. Swapping notes, helping out each other, filling the void where the men that were supposed to be in your lives have either let you down or been ostracized from the family. But you have to be very skeptical of anybody telling you about some optimal roadmap for your life. There's a lot of guys with real world deficiencies out there. And the only way to know which bucket is a good bucket and which bucket is a bad bucket is to wait, to listen, and to watch the guy with the bucket on his head. After they put that bucket on their head, was their life better? Was their life more successful? I mean, sure, anybody can show you pick up, how to get laid, how to date, how to have fun, but then what? Do you want to be like Roosh? Come back from Russia? Polish girlfriend dumps you? Turn into the Unabomber? Come like Stedman here? Bring back a Polish girl, make it slightly farther on the game of life, then throw it all away because Orange Man is definitely not bad? Yeah, what then? Because getting laid is one thing. Focusing on your goals and not bankrupting your family before you even get started by wasting all your money on gambling and bail while you ruin your future with a criminal record and lose sight of the plan you had to begin with, that's a whole other thing. Now, thankfully, I assume his lawyer has advised him to take down all the periscope evidence he had, but I'm pretty sure the authorities already have it. So, sometimes the best you can hope for is to be a cautionary example for others. What can I say? Most of the videos I have a little don't eat paint warning at the end. Well, this entire one is don't eat paint. So thanks for sticking around. Another red pilled coffee. Don't forget, Patreon's in the description. Come check it out. We don't charge to the end of the month. Come on in. We can swap notes like real men, not get arrested. I think that puts me above and beyond with my bucket anyway. As always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have fun. Cheers.
I don't know. But I only know what my heart feels. And my heart feels like... My heart still feels like the best... You know, the best is yet to come. 